Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today we are joined back by our very old friend, Mr. Kurt Ekstrom. Kurt, welcome back on. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> this was not planned. This was not. This, this was actually like a very, uh, I don't want to say random, but it, it something popped up, which if you've clicked on this and you're watching, you probably know why you're here. There is a very exciting Alex Van Halen uh, gear like artifacts, there's kids books, there's all kinds of stuff. Alex is like auctioning everything off. So this popped up. I mean, today's Thursday, May 23rd, when we're recording this, I think this popped up maybe on the 21st or something that like sounds, that. That sounds about right. About, or maybe the day before, maybe on the 20th of May. The auction, I believe, starts June 1st, 2024. I didn't even know about it. I actually was just getting back from the Chicago drum show and you mentioned, hey, did you hear about the, you know, I'm like, what? So I had to go and look. And so it took, you know, I took a little bit to look. So yeah, yeah. Which I, you know, I kind of was like, Kurt, I know it's short notice, but you did the whole series about Alex Van Halen on the podcast. And I was like, all right, we got to do this. Uh, I mean, it's a Thursday at 830 p.m. right now, just the only time it could line up. But this is crazy. So what what before we get into what it is and all this stuff, like as a diehard Alex Van Halen fan. What was go- what is going through your mind right now? Is this like the holy grail? Well, it it pretty much is. Um, I think, you know, as we discussed in the other episodes, that there are also a lot of stuff that he was already given away. But yeah. it just when you see what's in here, it's just staggering as to the amount of what is still left. Like yeah. the way I always kind of envisioned it in my mind was that you know it was like most of the good stuff had been picked over, and it was very few things left. But that's not true at all. He has I mean, a ton there's a ton of stuff. of stuff in here, and it's it's quite fascinating as to what it is. And the other thing I figure I should probably I don't know this for sure, and I'm and but I just want to get it out there. I think I've heard people here and there say, "Oh my gosh, like is he broke? Does he need money?" I don't think so at all. I don't think it's that at all. I think honestly, I think it really boils down to the fact that he likes to want it, likes playing with his brother Eddie. Eddie's Edward's not here anymore. That's all there is to it. He had I don't think he has the desire to play with anybody else. All he cared about was playing with Edward and his kids don't play um other than, you know, Wolfgang, which is his nephew, but yeah. but his two sons don't play and it's just it's a lot of stuff. And I'm sure at this point, you know, it came out earlier that he's writing a book and the book is gonna be out in October. So this is probably like one giant cap to his career where he's saying, you know, okay, you know, this is it. And I'm going to purge and, and get rid of this stuff. And, you know, you yeah. probably like, like a lot of parents think you probably don't want to leave all this stuff on your kids either. Like, you know, if they're not musicians and don't have a big thing, then next thing you know, they're saddled with a warehouse full of stuff. And <laughs> yeah, but and, I mean, I agree, but the difference is if, if I leave stuff, it's like a bunch of my crap, but if Alex Van Halen leaves it, it's worth millions of dollars. And, uh, you know, is well, yeah. <laughs> You know, but even, he's doing the legwork and wants to, and probably wants to enjoy a little bit of it, maybe. And uh, well, and the way they they presented it in there too is that it sounds like Alex wants the stuff to get into the hands of fans. Although, uh, you know, it's more likely that a lot of high end collectors are going to end up with it because regular average show fans probably aren't going to have the kind of money that these some of these things are going to pull in. You know. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, some of the stuff is absurdly expensive, as you would expect, but there is. So much stuff that if 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 you're watching this when this comes out, it will be before the auction goes live. So you have a chance to get on there and at least look and maybe yep. get like I don't know. I'm just completely joking here, but like a pair of his gym socks or something. <laughs> like, like you maybe yeah. will be able to get like the cheapest little thing, but you know, a, the the Bible yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's but the, really there's. We'll look through some of the more I don't want to call it oddity stuff, but there is some. There's the drum sets, which we're going to talk about and, and all that good stuff and the gold records. But there's a lot of like very just like, you know, like unique, the kids books and all that stuff. But yeah. All right, Kurt. So this is for everyone listening or watching on YouTube. What we're going to do here is um, I'm going to bring up a screen recording. So you're going to see real time as we look through this. So this is uh, an auction that is available on backstageauctions.com. Uh, which I've heard of before, seems very legit, um, and obviously it's the real deal. So uh, we'll put a link in the description so you guys can check it all out and everything. But um, 
All right, so let's bring up the screen recording for everyone now, and you can see we're on the uh, kind of first page. And if uh, if you guys on YouTube see me looking over here the whole time, I'm looking at an extra monitor I have set up. So, um, Kurt, where do you want to start here? Uh, well, I mean, I think, you know, just just for the sake of there's so much stuff here, we'll start a little bit backwards and work our way up a little bit. Sure. So if you go into the 1970s era, there were actually some things that I learned about this, you know, there were actually quite a few things that made me scratch my head, and I, and I learned that it was like um, I spent an awful lot of time on that 1970s silver sparkle set, like almost you know a nauseum uh, on it, and I was always under the the impression that the set was um, you know, he bought the set as a pro beat with a 24 inch bass drum, and then later on added a 26. But if you look at um, item, you know, yeah, that the item yep. there. That is a 22 inch early 70s Ludwig bass drum in Silver Sparkle. And so that uh, is his first, that's his first, that's the pro that's, drum well, set that they had set up in the living room. It's possible that, you know, because obviously you can't see what's below the, you know, the picture frame. But the one thing, and they're not showing the picture of this. So if you, if you go to the next picture, um, you see that little circular dot there that's over uh, in the previous picture. There is a little um, circular dot right there. Now there is a picture that I put in the in the other you know interviews where they show Alex in like um, Cherokee Studios or something, and you can actually see like a little black dot in that exact spot. So something mm. was there, and that's like a clearly the or something. yeah, and that is clearly the bass drum, and you can see that bass drum again in some of the early shots from about 1974 when Michael Anthony just joined. But yep. then you see it's a double bass kit, so it sounds almost like Alex got the 22 and the 24 or something to that effect. And then the other thing to note, and you just went by it too. Like if you're looking at the, um, they show the picture of the badge. Now um, these pictures are actually very high quality. Like if yeah. you were to click on the, you know, the bottom part, the badge has no serial number on it. I was actually looking at that and there is a small run. Um, it's just one of those coincidentally odd things but I've discovered from years of looking in June of 1970 and then later again in like September through October into early part of 19, you know, in November 1970, there was just a series of blank badges for whatever reason. So it leads me to believe that this drum is probably within that 1970 time frame somewhere within there. Gotcha. You know, it's, you know, but, but the other thing, at least in, that's nice to know that I was correct about is if you look at the page where it shows the interior of the drum, um, you will see that, um, clearly the drum was painted. Yes. So you can see where the lug screws, it painted right over the lug screws and everything. Now, the other thing that I find funny is that the, clearly these lug screws aren't painted, but it would not surprise me one bit if Alex over the years was a lot like Eddie and he just took pieces and parts off of stuff to make yeah. other stuff. So the yeah. original lugs on this kit, on this bass drum, if I were to guess they've been changed out because all the pictures I've seen of this bass drum in the seventies, the lugs are all covered in paint or at least the screws are. And this so, would, and this was not a factory Ludwig paint because it is not, it's got painted over the screws, obviously. Right. And so the original, like there's probably even an original date stamp from the seven, 1970, in that thing that's covered over in paint. Yeah. But, sure. but you know, with the amount of fiddling around that Alex and Edward have been known to do over the years, it's, it's, you know, and plus the fact that there's missing lugs. I mean, it's, in my opinion, it's possible that very much so that Alex took parts off of this to make something else work or who knows, you know? And so, um, it's, you know, you're talking about a drum yeah. that's the same age as me. It's a 53 year old drum. So, I mean, there's any, and plus yeah. you can see how it has spur mounts in the back behind it. So I, I don't know if either of the second set of spurs were added, but that's typically not something Ludwig was doing was double spurring bass drums, at least in 1970. No, and so no, definitely not. It may have been, you know, another necessity of invention, like, you know, Alex is a hard hitter and maybe, but I was just really surprised to see a 22. I really, I, I honestly never thought there was one. And so it just sort of changed my whole thought process of, how the set came to be so no and it's cool it's like you know again it's it's hey we never would have known this nope uh N nope. for sure otherwise and this the pictures are amazing on here again if you're watching on uh youtube you can see but if you're listening uh in the car or whatever um this is i highly recommend you check this out this is about as cool as it gets 
just to mention too, for the people listening, the amount of gold records that are for sale, right. and these are a thousand, five hundred, five hundred, a yep. thousand, two thousand starting bid. So these are going to go up. So I mean, and I think I mean, a, a lot of these ended up in you know their parents' house and oh, that's you know cool. and stuff like you know because a lot of times they would you know I don't know if Eddie and Alex were big on hanging that stuff in their homes or um, yeah, but there's yeah. There's some other, you know, there's like a kit, a maple kit at the top. I mean, there's some real mystery stuff in here. There's a maple drum set, which it's, you know, it's got to be, if you click on that one, it's got to be like, um, you know, late seventies, I think. I can't really tell. If you look at one of the shell pictures, you could probably see if it's a six ply or not, but, um, so yeah, this is not, a, and you got to remind me a little bit, like I don't, he didn't play this out live with Van Halen. I've this never was, seen this kit before. I've never yeah, seen so this it. is just, he might've bought this. It's, it's in the seventies category because it's a 1970s Ludwig set, but he might've bought it in 1996 or something, you know, it's, like, it's, it's possible. It's very possible, but, right. and it's a six ply. You can see it's a six ply kit and it's got the mufflers direct, directly over the badge, yep. but but there's not, you know, again, obviously everything, I don't want to dispute anything in this collection because it's all coming from his warehouse and it's a hundred percent legit, but I've never seen Alex playing a maple kit like this one from the seventies. So I just don't know what it's, it's wrong. Fun. It's fun to collect drums. <laughs> and I mean, you know, there's descriptions too from um, likely John Douglas in there, but when you have to do 350 descriptions, I mean, like it's probably a little tricky, you know, to. Like, like I actually, you know, believe it or not, I, it's kind of ties in, but I was at the Chicago drum show and I had a nice little talk with Gary Astridge and we were talking, you know, I was talking about Ringo stuff. And there were actually times where Gary is saying that, like, he's telling Ringo about something that he used and Ringo's yeah. like, I, I never use that. And yeah. of course, Gary produces the picture and Gary's Ringo's like, yeah, like you did. what the heck? You know, like, I, I yeah. don't remember that. And so, you know, it's, it's gotta be probably the same for any of these guys, you know? Yeah, for sure. And and one thing I think is cool about this auction is I think a lot of it, if I'm not mistaken, he, Alex has signed in some capacity. Yep, like, yeah. Like it, it says here that on in the description that the piece of gaff tape um, across uh, the 16 inch floor tom has his signature on it, which I think he's doing that just to be like, this well, is legit mine and just to sweeten the pot a little right and i think it, it sounds like when i read some of the stuff in the beginning of this auction it almost sounds like like alex went through the warehouse with john douglas at one point and probably just like randomly signed a bunch of stuff with a sharpie in hand yeah but it's yeah. likely that john douglas did all the legwork later on and the other thing to note is if you look where the bottom where it says the shipping it says like the shipping out of Texas, and that's John Douglas, I believe, is in Houston, Texas. Yeah, so, it says for a, for a lot of it, it says for drum kits like the big ones, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, <laughs> like you need to set up a special carrier. Yeah, like like you got to get this thing. Um, right? Can you explain again for people who maybe didn't listen to the other one or don't remember who it, who John Douglas is and his relationship with Alex? So John Douglas is Alex's uh, drum tech. He's been his drum tech probably. I think he started like loosely working with him in the late nineties, but I think he became his full time tech bar around two thousand four. And okay. so, and and not only is John Douglas, you know, he's tech for like Aerosmith and uh, a lot of other bands, uh, ZZ Top. But he's also an amazing artist, and so he's done all kinds of crazy artwork. And as you'll see later on when you look at some of the pieces of the kits or some of the painted heads, or I mean, he's just amazing yeah. the way he does that stuff. But he's clearly, you know, he's Alex's boss. It's funny yeah. to see that. You're looking at that like a, a mallet for the gong that's been burned. <laughs> it's Surprise. a burnt Shock. gong mallet for $1,000. <laughs> yeah. Kurt, do you think your wife would be happy if you spent a thousand dollars on a burnt gong mallet, mallet, and uh, brought it home? <laughs> would I would. Get <laughs> uh, but to answer that question, I would ask if there's an extra bed up in the attic up there. <laughs> yeah, I think you'd have some explaining to do if you bought that. But you need some childcare help. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can come <laughs> sleep with the kids. I mean, but the, one other cool thing about this auction is is, and I'll show as many as I can here is the pictures many of which, all of which pretty much were featured in the, the Alex Van Halen series you and I did, but it is yeah. showing, I mean, this gong mallet, not only yeah. was it lit on fire for so, for so many times, but it's now, I mean, 40 ish years later, oh, 50 yeah, years absolutely. later, it's surviving. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. It survived. And it, like, it looks, it's funny to see all the tape. Like, I just wonder if it broke, like did they, you know, 
just not have an, another one? Did they just tape it up or I don't know. You know, nowadays I feel like people just like replace things more. And that's yep. not a comment on like, you know, the throwaway <laughs> culture. It's more like, no, like, v- like Vic Firth would send you like 500 mallets and you would just like, all right, this one's charred, get a new one. But this one looks like it's been. And, you know, again, not to jump ahead, but you'll see that later on when you see the sticks, there's like bricks sticks. So the other thing True. that really actually honestly shocked me as we, you know, kind of skip around the seventies a little yep. bit more yep. is, um, there's actually some Gretsch drums. Um, I'm just trying to see what I'm looking at here. Okay. Um, here's what's Gretsch, that? Uh, here's a Gretsch seventies studio. Um, yeah. Like, you know, and you'll see later on, if you're looking at some of the random stuff, he's got some Gretsch drums. And I was like, what? I had yeah. no idea he had liked Gretsch drums. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, in true Van Halen fashion, you know, Edward and Alex, this thing is full of holes, you know, so. Just experimenting and stuff. But it's like, it it looks like it got its time in the sun. You know what I mean? Like it got played. It did. It got Alex. played somewhere, you know, it got used for something, you know, maybe. Maybe, studio, you know, because studio I, or, and, you know, as you know, from doing the podcast, it's a well-known, you know, sort of secret that people always talk about Gretsch drums in the studio. Yeah. You know, they've yeah. always had sort of a place like in La- Lars and stuff like that. And, yeah. Uh, I think even appetite for destruction was recorded on a Gretsch kit. Yeah. So, I think, yeah. but, but so, you know, it's interesting to see some Gretsch kits and then uh, I don't know what that studio used kick drum. So if you see that one there, that's sort of a, yeah. Um, 1970s. Look. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, so so in the pictures I have in in one of my podcasts, if you're looking, um, there's a picture I posted where it looked like it was either Alex's warehouse. I actually learned some stuff since the podcast. Some somebody astute person told me that the pictures I was showing where I thought it was a, a warehouse was actually Dave's basement. Because I think those guys just went from album tour, album tour, and likely after the tour was done, they stashed everything down in the basement. And then I want to say that after they split with Dave, I'm sure they had to have somebody go over there and take all that stuff out of there. And then that's when he likely <laughs> rented a warehouse is my guess. But there's a picture of Alex and he's sitting right next to a Rosewood bass drum, just like this one. So I'm going to guess yeah. that's the bass drum, but I just don't know what it was used for. And it says studio. And this is like an early 80, like an early 80s bass drum. And I'm tempted to think that it may have been used on like fair warning or something, but. Yeah. Again, it's just spitballing, I guess, because I wasn't there. So, but like when I have a bass drum that has cracks and tape all over it and it's in horrible shape, it's not worth anything. With this one, though, when it's Alex Van Halen doing it, it starts at a thousand dollars. I mean, it's just crazy because like that broken lug or whatever's going on there with the tape, it's like, oh, yeah, it's yeah. just like it's probably <laughs> David Lee Roth that stepped on it and it broke off or something. It's just like. And it's possible. It's, I mean, it's just who knows. But again, like these are things that I've never seen pictures of. But but then again, there's never been one picture from the recording sessions of, you know, Fair Warning or, you know, um, Diver Down or, you know, who knows? Like, yeah, it's impossible. What do we to have uh, here? 19, 2000s studio. So it's just a, these are oh, just a of- like. Bunch beaters. of beaters. I mean, this is stuff that everybody's got in their parts closet. You know what I mean? But okay, this is a hundred bucks. This is something you could buy. Um, you know, Alex Van Halen's beaters. I I know there's no way to know this, and I mean, I'm sure you're not. You're not. You may be, but like an auction I'm, hound. Yeah, guy, I'm like, not. What, what do you think this will go for? I mean, uh, it really depends. You know, if it depends, like these types of things, in my opinion, sound like the kind of things that would go last. Only because everybody that was bidding would want to be bidding up, you know, on the stuff that they're really interested in. But then, like, you know, maybe somebody throws in some kind of a winger bid just so they know, like, I got to have something. I don't know. I'd do that. I'd say, like, yeah, like I said, I want Alex's, like, uh, whatever, sweat band, his headband or something. And and I'm not that kind, you know, I mean, honestly, the, you know, uh, if I had something, you know, of just like, you know, Maybe either a drum or something, you know, I mean, I would be completely happy with one item, um, yeah. but yeah. it wouldn't need to be anything big or anything like that. But I just, for me, I don't think like I wouldn't really be all that, you know, I probably have to keep all those things in a plastic box somewhere because I mixed in with all my other parts and I never know what was what anymore. Yeah. Cause he didn't sign every single beater. Oh, but- no, no, no. And it's hard to know like when he used it. Is that a, is that a hi-hat stand? Like a Ludwig? There's a. Yeah, there's a hi hat stand, 1970s Spurlock. Ludwig and so you know stand. that is right there is likely a hi hat stand that he used with his first kit. Crazy. That's, 
I mean, you know, it's hard to know. I mean, they they made millions of those things. I mean, I probably have about six of those things at home. Yeah. Here. So yeah. I mean, it's it's really hard to know for sure. But it's from the Alex Van Halen collection. And what's you know, what's you know, the the price of that? Two hundred and fifty. Two fifty. Yeah. That'll go up. I bet. I mean, that'll that might be seven hundred dollars or something like that. You know? Who, yeah. who knows? But and I'd have to look at those pictures again from like when he's in the studio and stuff, and just to see if that's you know. Yeah. That looks like you know the same model of the hi hat stand. All right, let's like move you, on. Yeah, like you said, anything could be could have been bought later. But yeah, let's we can yeah. move on. 1980s? So the 80s is probably where the most amount of action is going to happen when you're with this entire auction. This yes. is where it Starting gets absolutely more, crazy. There's gold records, $2,000, $2,000, fair warning, yeah. fair warning, fair warning. Yeah. Um, he has quite a lot of gold records. Um, why don't we yeah. start here? Why don't we start at the top? So Diver Down, yeah, album so- and tour. We've um, we discussed this kit, and this kit was one of the categories between this one. It was sort of a battle between this one and the fair warning kit for the largest kit. So this kit was absolutely yep. gargantuan. So clearly, in this, you know, there's a lot of pieces missing out of this kit. Um, from what's for sale, you can see there's no floor toms. The main bass drums with all those weird tubings, those are gone. So those these are, would be probably the side bass. Yeah, those are the side bass drums. There's no Simmons pads. There's no, you know, no hardware. I mean, no Timbales. There's a lot of pieces missing out of this massive kit. So it literally is the two side bass drums, and it looks like the mountain toms, and that's about it. Yeah, and it says this is the last remaining uh, pieces of the Diver Down drum set. Uh, and again, for people who are, you know, just listening, this is the kit that has the insane, like, whatever, 15 little small tubes coming out of the bass yeah. drums. But those are not included. Those are missing. Yeah, those are long. Who knows what happened to those? Still you know, cool. And again, it looks like, you know, it looks like he painted the insides of this kit, too, because those sort of been a, ma- a maple color. And they're like an early 80s. You can see they got the rounded corner badges and they got the modular hardware, which yeah. is a, a very, you know, an early 80s thing for sure. So, yeah, it says if these drums could talk the stories they would tell his, uh historic lot of vintage drums and it looks like the the front heads on the bass drums are the ones that were on if you click on the tour picture again you know you can see that those probably are the same front heads um you know the black dot heads so yep Yep. so that's pretty cool they're they're definitely yeah no definitely tour used and they did a lot of grand five grand to start with yeah not surprised um, fifty-one fifty. So this or, is the mother load. This is the biggest <laughs> item in the lot. Yeah. This is the this the is absolute mother load. Seventy-five thousand dollars to start. Yeah, and this one's gonna be easily. I mean, I don't know. I'm gum spitballing, but it's gonna be over easily over a hundred in my opinion. But it could be even further north of that. It's really hard to tell. It's this in is, really complete. You know, it, it's complete, but um, there's a lot of weirdness going on too with it. Um. This is the kit that I saw when I was 15. This is the tour set. The weird thing that I can't even imagine why in the world somebody would do this is the uh, right side bass drum has been cut in half. So if you look at the, um, if you look at some of the shots, you'll see like, you know, that first shot, you can kind of see it. And um, you can see how there's sort of a, um, you can see the lugs behind the, um, you know, like, like it looks like a 20, you know, like, like it's 14 size now. Like it's not like the the left side bass drum is one oh, long yeah. cylinder, and this one's been cut down, and oh, so is the other one. This side, right? And yeah, both of them on that side. I see. I see. And I so see, they I both see. have got cut down at some point, which makes zero sense. And it's really a really a shame because if they had not cut those down, the set would be just about you know fully complete, or it would be at the point where somebody could, if they wanted to, restore it back to its former original glory. Because if that was me, and I had the money and i bought this kit i you know even though there's a lot of people in the camp of saying you know well you just leave it as in as is condition but i would probably want to make it look the exact same way it did when i um you know when i uh yeah bought the you know when the kit was being played in 1986 polish it up and polish it up and just make it look you know i don't know maybe the polishing is sacrilege i don't know but i mean i (laughs) want it to look like the uh I'd want it to look like it did when it was last played in San Francisco Cow Palace, I think it was. But man, I mean, where I, I'm very interested to see. We may never know because it's probably going to be a private person who doesn't want, you know, yeah, it to be out there. But to see where these go, 
is uh, very, very interesting. I mean, this is this is this is one you need to get special shipping for as well. Oh, obviously. absolutely. You know, and it's I wouldn't even you know, I mean, you'd really probably want to try and figure out how to get this in person, just so nothing broke. But um, the other thing, right there, that picture. So if you look where the hole is and where that little uh, hose is supposed to go, you can see like there's no obviously there's no badge. They're using Ludwig lugs. But that is a really thick Vistalite shell, like really thick. Yeah. Like a Bloodwig yeah. didn't make Vistalite shells that thick. And so it's, in my opinion, he had this custom made somewhere. And, and I'm just, again, I'm, I'm guessing, but that is a very thick shell. It's almost and, like an inch thick. I mean, it's like three quarters of an inch. And, and it also looks like either somebody spray painted the hoses again, like black, or they were red and then they got, I don't know. They were, you know, maybe the reds underneath, maybe the, maybe they the were red, red originally, right? Yeah. Maybe the red wore off. Like it's, it's hard to tell exactly what the heck happened there. Yeah. And, and you can see there's like two of them per side and one of the sides has only got one of them on it. Yeah. So there's yeah. all, there's well, some very strange things. And then the other thing they mentioned in the auction, it looks like they're included, but I think um, one of the stands for the octobands. So if you look at the original first picture of the, um, you know, the kit, you can see that it's kind of missing octobands on its, um, you know, the player's right side, all the way off to the right mm -hmm. um, on that, you know, yeah, our left, the player's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There sure. should be like two more octobands up there, which is crazy, but. um, hmm. Interesting. Well. But I mean, I think, you know, obviously somebody would be, you know, setting this back up. And then it's, of course, it's missing a, the fifth Simmons pad. And then there's no brains to go with it because off to Alex is like. You know, when you're sitting at the kid off to his left side over the hi hat, he had like a rack with two brains in it, two SDSBs. Yeah. yeah. So Man, it's still a, unbelievable. And it comes with the symbols, it looks like. It as does well. it does not actually. The it last does picture not. Okay. Nope. The last picture shows the kit without symbols. Gotcha. So um okay, it, okay. it says read, in the read your auction, descriptions before you uh, yeah, if you're listening sure, to this and you're gonna bid. Make sure yeah, you make read. sure you read everything click carefully because I you know, I read it pretty closely and I mean, it's just crazy to see the sizes and and all that, but but this this is the biggest ticket item probably in this auction. Yes, so. uh, it is without question one of the most iconic Alex Van Halen drum kits. It drips with uh, history, blood, sweat, and cheers. That's pretty good. Isn't that uh, funny. You like that? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I do indeed like that. Okay, that's awesome. But so it just you know it just to me this is the one that gives me the most nostalgic emotion because this is the kid I saw when I was 15 and it just, and it's, you know, I talked about it in the, in the episodes of where it just dwarfed Gary Patterson's Yamaha kit as he was playing with the BTO. <laughs> you can picture a four piece Yamaha kit in front of this. And then you'll understand, you know, there was a bed sheet cover in this thing and they yeah. pull the bed sheet off and you're just like, what in the world is what that? What is that thing? There's so, hoses. Yeah. Yeah. So unbelievable. So that's, unbelievable, the, yeah. that's the big one. Rem let's remember that price because I'm pretty sure that's probably the most expensive item yeah. in the auction. I, but, the other thing, too, I will say this, you know, and this is probably maybe not intentional, but, um, you know, I mean, I know that I'm not going to really, you know, I'm probably not going to own any of this stuff, but the pictures are so great that I was able to yeah. sort of, you know, take some of the pictures in high quality and I'll probably just make myself some nice little wall hangers. Oh, that's from, awesome. For, for the drum room, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's like, why not? I mean, these are professionally done photos. I think that's that's super they cool. Are. Um, and I mean, I'm hoping I'm not encouraging anybody to print some out and, and resell them because that's not what I mean at all. But I'm just, I want to have a few that, you know, to remember this by because this will, you know, this is a once in a lifetime auction. Yeah. And I'll never see that kit likely again. So I made sure I, you know, grab some screens of it. So. No, totally. And save it. Cause again, uh, I, you know, I have found that with uploading a bunch of drum videos to Instagram and Facebook over the years is like, I've saved them all on Dropbox and I will realize, I realize that a lot of them on YouTube don't exist anymore or yeah. something like that. So save the photos and you know, that's, that's a good idea. There is so much here. So let's pick and choose. Yeah, some. I mean, it's, it's, we we so got some snares. The other thing, here's what's confusing to me as we move out of the 5150 kit is that you know we talked extensively in the in the stuff about him using a Tom of Rosewood and we explained how he got the Tom of Rosewood in like 81ish in that area 80 81 and um but the weird thing is is that any picture you see of Alex and I show this in all the the stuff that we did 
the Thomas Nair has the coffin lugs. So those are like the center sort of lugs. Yes. And uh, and I'm not a Tama expert, so I mean, I, I apologize. But every single snare you're looking at has the long Tama lugs. You know what I mean? Did he change? You wouldn't change the lugs. I, see, now like I don't that. know. I mean, I wouldn't think so. But after looking at some of the butcher jobs, like on some of the other stuff he's got, it wouldn't surprise me or it wouldn't surprise me. Like, I don't think any of these snares... They may have been certainly used in the studio. So if so you look at the... Pi- here, yeah, here's a picture from the... And you look at the snare drum, it's clearly not the same snare drum. Those are coffin lugs in the center, and those are long lugs. And it's, you know, it's still a Tom Rosewood, and it's still owned by Alex. And I mean, I have you know no way to verify or know at all what he used in the studio. But so like, that's the thing, though, which is crazy about this, is like no one is debating at this point that this is not... Alex's or it was Absolutely. not played by Alex, but it's just like adds some mystery to it of like, when did he use it? But yeah, yeah, that that's really what it boils down to is not as of obviously everything's authentic and it has nothing to do with, it's just more or less, okay, when, cause I'm one of those people that's like, okay, I got the snare drum. Well, I want to know where, what it was used on. Like what songs was, you will never probably know that stuff, yeah. but it's kind of funny. And again, I'm not a Tama collector, but I know that Tama drums, like that fetch a lot of money. So even if this, even if Alex never laid a stick to it and he signed the side of it, it's probably worth a ton of money. Cause I mean, it says, yeah, I mean, it says it was used extensively on album recordings, uh, as well as on the 1984 and 5150 tour. So that's and again, like very every, specific, you every, know? every picture I've seen of Alex on tour in playing a Rosewood stair has got the center coffin lug. So I'm not, you know, disputing because maybe this was a backup. I mean, because you can't tell me they brought one snare or, you know, I'm only looking at specific shows and maybe they just decided to swap them around every now and then, or who yeah. knows? So, so, I mean, I just don't well, know. I just, I don't have enough evidence to go by. So that's no, spoiled. It, this is a uh, quintessential Alex snare drum created his signature Brown sound says a description 12,500. It could be yours uh, as a starting bed. So, Pretty incredible. Yeah, a lot of these snares, 12, 5, 12, 5, 10,000, 10,000. Sleeping on the street could be mine also, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very um, true. Very, very true. true. But, you know, and, and, and again, we're talking about these snare drums, but I also think that um, the one with the coffin lugs, I'm going to guess that was his number one. Like, I'm guessing that was the very first one he got, and I'm guessing that's number one. And I have this feeling that, it's either been gifted to somebody or somebody it's somewhere. Like I, I just feel like that drum is like the one that he used live yeah, most. And sure. Cause because if you look at like, you know, people talk about the Frankenstrat for Eddie, I mean, yeah. he had how many, uh, how many copies of that thing for backups and you, you have know. to. And so he had like two main, you know, striped axes, but a bunch of other ones that were backups and whatnot. So, I mean, these are all, yeah. you know, a lot of these, but, but so the uh, so when you get into these later ones with the um I guess they say they have a chrome finish on them. So Alex during the OU812 tour did use like an eight by fourteen uh white Tama, you know, snare with the long lugs on it. And that actually makes it look white, but um but according to the description, that thing is chrome. It's probably like really hard to photograph. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because so, I've I've Mike Mike Dawson talked to me about that, about working at um Drum Factory Direct about filming or i'm sorry taking pictures of uh tension rods is hard because it's yeah. chrome and it um so it says in some of these descriptions that alex actually like recovered or had recovered drums in like so maybe he had a tom of like rosewood that he really liked and then he decided to cover it in chrome but this one i don't know what these lugs are again i'm not a tom expert but this one in particular like if you look at the pictures from the OU812 tour, the lugs don't look like that. They look like that last Rosewood. So yeah. there's yeah. also, you know, the distinct possibility that, you know, Alex covered one of those Rosewoods. I mean, if you look at, I want to say there's two chrome ones. If you look at one of the other the other chrome one. Yeah, I think that I think this is the other one that I wasn't on before because the tape. Yeah, so those lugs. Those are the lugs that we saw on the other rosewood ones that look yeah. rosewood colored. So yeah. that, in my opinion, that's likely the snare drum he used on the OU on two tour, but it was likely white. And then he probably you know rewrapped it in chrome. And I think he used a, yeah. a chrome one he used during the for unlawful carnal knowledge tour. 
because he had a chrome kit and he had a chrome big deep snare. So it would be my guess that that was the snare he was using. But you can see the holes in the side too because he used was using like May internal mics. He was like yeah. early user of those, and that was probably in the early nineties. And it, it's just yeah. really funny the, the the common theme you'll see in a lot of these drums and stuff is that they're full of holes and stuff because they don't, they weren't supposed to be collector pieces. They're just tools they're that like, Alex and Edward both, you know, use their instruments as tools. So. Absolutely. And one that's, that's like, I'm like 1500 bucks on a starting bed is a noble and Cooley. Yeah. Now did these, like, another, that's pretty affordable. I mean, it's, from a, obviously it's, it's going to go up, but it's a very mystery drum. Like I, you know, and it, the other thing that I find funny is a lot of these descriptions shows drums that I've never either seen, never heard of. But of course, you know, nobody knows what goes on in a studio. But um, if you listen to any Van Halen record all the way through, like Diver Down or any of those, the snare drum pretty much sounds the same. Like when I listen to Diver Down, it sounds to me like he used the, you know, probably the coffin lug Rosewood or one of them through the whole album. But all yeah. these things will say like the Noble and Cooley well, it was used in the studio. Okay, on on what? So on is that what? so? So are you telling me that there's that much material hidden in the or was the, it demos or was it other exactly. bands in there recording or you know exactly? Um, this is this is pretty iconic. So we've got the 1984. So uh, yeah, so and, and the jump video. I mean, this is we all remember this one. Yeah. So the interesting thing about seeing these, and remember, I was telling you in the in the other previous episode that. These drums, like they look great on stage, but then the minute you see them up close, it's really kind. Of, they're really kind of like, you know, hodgepodge Art, together. Arts it's, and arts and crafty. Art, yeah, artsy, like I yeah. mean, these things kind of like if you zoom really in on that, if on one of those, I mean, look at the dr glue drips everywhere. I mean, it's really kind of kind of sloppy in some ways. You know what I mean? Like it's it's yeah. not something you would call like you know. It certainly wasn't something that made by John Craviato. You know what I mean? Like no, 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 no. But it did. But but, but it looked they, great from the stage. I mean, look at with the light hitting it. I mean, this is about as cool. The picture of him standing behind it in the sunglasses is quite possibly one of the coolest pictures. Ever Absolutely, taken. and I think you know that picture. You know, it's right over by, behind my head. But um, yes, exactly. Yes. But but the funny funny thing too is that like you know I'd always kind of wondered when I was younger like how the heck did they do this so the mirrors didn't fall off. But, you know, Just the mirrors didn't, glue. The, but the, you could see how well those are glued in. The other thing that's funny whenever I see those pictures too, is that last picture you were just showing that is, um, that's, you know, a fan, a fan made tribute kit. That's not his kit. It's funny. And so everybody that's uses funny. this photo because he did such an amazing job at making this kit. Uh, yeah. I think his name yeah. was, um, Mike Russo. And, uh, he was, he was from a hot minute. He was in the Van Halen tribute, Van Halen. And he made this kit, and I can imagine after about three shows of dragging this around, he was probably like, "That's it." Yeah, you know, I'm going to play a silver sparkle kit. Or yeah, but it, but he did an absolutely astonishing job at making this kit. I mean, it looks identical, you know. Yeah. But um, but everybody uses it, and of course, of course, Alex is using it too. Like, I just find that's it funny. funny. That's funny. Yeah, you know, that's um, a really good uh, that's a really good pat in the back of somebody you make a tribute kit, and some you know they're using it to promote using it his to sell the real kit. The yeah, real right. Yeah. So let's just keep on chugging here because there's yeah, still yeah, yeah, so yeah. much to there's see. There's so, so much got, to see. Um, Simmons. Brains. So here's where I get all you know. You know, I love all the Simmons stuff. So they got yes. two SDSV brains. You can see, and uh, or actually maybe there's three of them. But um, but you can see like when you click on them, like one of them will say, you know, Alex wrote something like more Toms or something. Um, hmm. like on the top or whatever he wrote. I think he wrote like more Toms on the top. Oh oh oh. More toms. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. And so he signed it, you know, so he likely had one brain that just controlled the toms. And then he has a bottom, the bottom brain says, you know, the next, when you look at the next Simmons pad thing, you know, see over there on his left over there, those are the two brains yeah, right so, up in there. Uh, yeah. This would be a picture of the. Yeah. So it's like a road case. And it 50, just had a 150 kit with it. Yeah. Face plate over the road, over the thing. And they just transport it in a road case. And so one yeah. of them must have been toms. And then the, the second brain must have been bass drums. And then I'm guessing he likely had backups because I don't know how reliable those things were. And I'm sure they needed backups. And then you got kick drums here, probably. Yeah, kick drums, you know, and stuff like that. And so it's yeah. interesting. And, and it's also funny to know, too, because, like, I think we were looking. There was a picture of him in the 84 tour drinking a beer. And it's like, you know, beer splashing everywhere. And that brain's <laughs> only like a couple of feet away from his head. Like, 
I mean, I imagine how much beer got dumped into that thing. Yeah, seriously. You know, so it's kind of funny to see that, you know, and those things, you know, but I guess where they, where they lived, I think they made those in Calabasas, California was where the uh, distributor place was because John DeChristopher actually worked there as his first, like one of his first jobs in the industry. And so. John works everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a he's the man, you know. But but what? But you know, my point is, is that you know, if beer got spilled into one. It was probably send it off to the Calabasas to have them fix it, you know. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's um, you know, they also show Simmons pads. So um, you know, and this is probably something I'd really like to have is one of these Simmons pads. But if you see the the one in the middle, the white one there, that that white colored, um. The one above it. That red. That's red. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so you know the red right, one. Right. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that here, one I'll go, was. I'll go to the white one here. Yep. Yep. Or so no, that, that's red. Too. Yeah. No, Sorry. they're red. They're, that's fine because the red one was actually used. If you look at that last picture at the bottom, there's a picture of Eddie in the studio, and you can see the red Simmons kit that's, behind him. Yes. Okay. So this is the so, fifty-one fifty house. So Simmons this was right likely here. the kit that he used to record fifty-one fifty. So I'm. Um, yeah, that would be my my guess. Is this you know. Albums recorded on that, and the black ones were used in the road. Okay, I see. And so, so that's why I find this really kind of interesting. I'd love to have one of those red pads. And then, yeah. if you scroll down even more, they have another white pad. I think it's um this one one. What is it? Keep going down, like the next one. Yeah, well, that one. So this one is a white pad, like an SDSV white pad. And so, no, actually, that's an SDX. So I've never. I'm not sure when he would have used that, but that one actually looks like my pad over behind me, although mine's yep. not an SDX because the SDX were zone intelligent. But if you go back one, that one. Yep. So that one was the single pad. Looks like it was used on the OU It One Two Tour. So you'll see it in the, the back couple of pictures. Oh, they're actually using they're actually using fifty one fifty pictures, but I don't think that's right. Those are um that single pad was used during the OU It One Two tour. He had a single SDSV pad that he would do the end of his solo on where he did that build up. And that's yeah. the pad right there. You can tell that it's a, mm. a white SDSV. So I think that's where that pad came from the OU It One Two kit. Pretty Which incredible. you know conspicuously is just is absent from the auction. Like I've never heard of where that kit went and nobody knows and so I imagine stuff that's just not there, just like you said, got given away, got lost, absolutely. got something or other. A lot of symbols here. Lots probably of too symbols. Many to go through individually. Big, but yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of pisties, big gong. You see some broods and stuff, and yeah, um, that's a twelve thousand dollar gong right there. That's it's a forty inch incredible. gong. Yep. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Um, drumsticks. I don't. Uh, I I'd often wonder about gongs. Like I didn't know if he would get a new gong every tour or if he would just keep the same gong but it looks like he had multiple gongs that makes sense i mean you light them on fire and well i mean he stopped though lighting them on fire by 1982 okay, so okay after yeah, yeah, yeah. well it turned into the gas that they would like right but uh but 1984 never had a lit gong and i never oh, saw I him okay i never ever saw him play you know and the cool thing they did on the last tour was they actually made like a computer inversion of like like the look like the gong lit on fire from the video screen behind it but obviously That's it was cool. not real so <laughs> yeah a little safer a lot safer yeah so we got sticks here uh, yeah all kinds of stuff i mean yeah that they're not they're a hundred bucks you got a lot of tambourines you got percussive oh so here you have for 250 bucks you have one of the lansing yep yep radial horns, horns. wow Put that on a shelf, you know. Yeah, oh yeah. There's a, just a lot of lot of weird stuff, but um, um but I, in my rack. opinion, the yeah. '80s is the '80s is where most people are going to be interested in. In my opinion, yeah, yeah I would agree because, I mean, even imagine owning a recording studio and you get a bunch of tambourines and you're like, yeah, that's Alex Van Halen's. But I mean, some of these are not even open, so like, it's right. clear, like, like you know, they were. These items are in new and unused condition. Yeah. Uh, so they're from 5150, it says the studio. So yeah. Interesting. Um, and, you know, I mean, just to do a little point real quick is like there's a video at 5150 where those guys are in there and they're doing like a uh, basically like a giving away concert tickets or something and they play live in the studio and you see them using headphones so they can all hear each other because it was like 1993. 
And so yeah. they played like dreams and won't get fooled again. Well, Edward has a problem with his headphones and they must've gone through about three pairs of headphones until he got one that worked. And so like, you just think about like how many tambourines were probably were laying around there or, you know, yeah, Hey, exactly. you know, you know, yeah. whoever was teching at the time, you know, go out and buy me like 20 tambourines. We could leave the studio. Yeah, exactly. And just always have them. Um, yeah. All right. I'm jumping in the nineties here. Okay. So uh, this is a real shocker. This first one is a blue Gretsch kit. It's like a blue, um, what do they call that color? Like a, um, I'm having a mind fart. Um, um, like a sea blue, you know, like Caribbean, Caribbean blue. blue. There we go. I, um, I had sort of heard little rumblings about him playing a Gretsch kit on that for unlawful carnal knowledge album, but I had never seen it or I never knew anything about it. And, and this may be the kit that he used on that album. I big, you know, again, big hole on the side. Yeah. Yep. Mother of inventions, yeah. you know, you just, but it's, but it's interesting to see like, you know, this is not, he's, you know, he's had a couple of flings along in the lines here with Gretsch drums, which is kind of interesting to see. It definitely is. And I mean, and the, the other part still of that, extremely cool. Yeah. Well, the other part of that, that I find surprising is that this is the album where they used Andy Johns to produce. And so, of course, Alex was going through his big, huge John Bonham face, and you would have thought this is where he would have pulled out the, you know, the John Bonham kit, but here he is playing a Gretsch kit. Yeah. And so seriously. it's just surprising to me to see this, but, um, that is, yeah. Um, but yeah, looks like you got some Ludwig's, uh, pound cake video shoot. Okay. Painted. And, and when we did our episodes, like, I mean, it was just too much stuff to get into. And I mean, I could have gotten into video kits, but this is the set he used during the pound cake video, which is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, very cool. But, you know, that's the only time it ever appeared anywhere was in this video. So it's not really something I covered because there wasn't really anything known about it. But now no, here but we have it. You know, for $10,000, you know, you can, I buy mean, it. this is really cool. Yeah. This auction probably would have helped when I was putting the episode together. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, like, I didn't know, like, you know, because when you see the video, like, they show them in, it's one of those videos where they show each member for about half a second. So it's like and then one of those a story or something. Yeah, throughout and the it's, video. it's one of yeah. those OCD videos where they just drive you crazy because they don't focus on anybody for more than half a second. Yeah. So you oh, have yeah. to like pause the thing to you know get a look at the kit, and so that was nice to see that. And then um, what's the one below it there? That says pound cake drums, but maybe now these... I don't think it was you know obviously it wasn't pound cake because pound cake we just saw, but he did do a video for the song feels so good, and he's using a black kit, so that may be that one. Yeah, maybe it was the same day or something like that. Or it's just, um, yeah, it's it's possible. Whiskey a go go secret show right here right now. So the whiskey a go go real quick. They did the um they did a uh, secret surprise show because they wanted to make a live uh, video for the um to promote the right here right now album, and they did yeah. a live version of Dreams and they played at the whiskey a go go and they uh, unannounced it. So if, like fans caught wind of it, and in the video you'll see all these fans going crazy running down the street trying to get in. And, uh, but this is the kit he used. So okay. it was like, you know, a maple kit. And you see he's got the May mics and stuff all over it. And then he just like stores it. I'm sure he played it maybe every once in a while, but man, there's so many drums. There's so many drums. House. And so, um, and then you'll see the next kit after it. Uh, they went on the uh, Right Here, Right Now tour. So basically what it was is they released a live album from the 1991 for Unlawful Cardinal Knowledge tour. But then they went on tour for the 1993 and they were, um, they did one called, you know, right here, right now tour. So they toured off of a live album and then that picture you showed, and I'm going to guess, um, I mean, I don't know if John Douglas was involved at this far back as far as maybe even just painting, but that Creating looks like something that stuff. he could have yeah. done. I yeah. mean, this is 1993, so I have no idea where his involvement might have been that far back. Maybe he just got commissioned to do some heads. I don't know. Started but, um, the relationship or something. But this, you know, I saw this tour back to back nights, and this was that amazing show I saw where Steven Tyler was standing behind him. And oh, this yeah. This was the cool. kid he was using. So I, this was, you know, this kit sounded fantastic live. Um, um, nice. Cocktail kit. I noticed that. I mean, yeah, that's so, pretty awesome. 2009 Studio Used Tour, Steve Jordan. And I can't even begin to imagine what the heck they must have used that on. I'm sure it was just hanging around the studio or who knows. I mean, I've always wanted one of these. I've yeah. always wanted a cocktail kit. 
But would I use it that? I probably wouldn't use it that much. But I'd and or I, just put it in the corner of a room or something. They really are fun. I have a '68 Ludwig, and it. it's a little fun to yeah. play. That's awesome. Um, all right, let's keep going. We got it's, it's, yeah. There's some more stuff here. You, get, you know, various snares. Um, it's impossible congas. to cover all this stuff. So those congas are from the um, the uh, the tour with Gary Sharon. He had a whole yep. set colored like this. Yep. And and I think John Douglas did do the artwork on this. Yep. Very cool. Very and cool supposedly stuff. the Sanskrit is supposed to be in Van Halen three in Sanskrit, I think. So there's you know, and, yep. and, and around this time, I'd say around Balance Tour nineteen ninety eight, Alex was starting to use things like Tim Bollings in his setup and other things, auxiliary percussion y things. We have uh a Roland T D ten V drum kit from home studio. We've got some electronic drums. We have uh, some video shoot, like artwork design, kick drum yeah. heads, which are awesome. Those have to be John um, Douglas. Yeah. Music video used drum mute pads. Those are interesting to serve yeah. the purpose of making yeah. it so they're quiet on yep. video shoot. Um, yep. You know, <laughs> the symbols galore. You couldn't even, we can't even dive into the symbols. It's impossible. This there's too so many. many. There's, there's too, too many. many. This. We'd we'd have to go through every single thing. Yeah. No. We. Um, you know. More gong mallets. Not not burned. Uh, more sticks. Um. You'll see like bricks of sticks. Different cowbells. Yeah. Cowbell. The seat. You see how low the seat is. The seat all the way down to the ground. I know. Yeah. Here's the headband. I can get my headband that I was talking about. Um. Oh, I can see funny. me buying that. And my wife like washing. What's the it. price on that? A <laughs> hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. Oh my god. That I would get. cost some marital discourse you washed yeah, my would, van halen headband oh my gosh i'd get thrown out of the house for buying spending a hundred dollars on a headband <laughs> on a piece of like a terry cloth headband still unbelievably cool though um wireless this, seat belt i know he's got like in-ear monitors in one of these too so oh, what the heck is that i didn't even see wireless that wireless seat belt so this looks like so the pictures at the bottom must yeah Oh, you know what? He was having a lot of back problems at those at, the, at that time. So maybe and this was, was his neck as well. Yeah, I don't even understand where oh, the seat. It's belt. holding his in ear. Uh, uh, oh, like okay. Receiver or whatever on yeah, it. Yeah, he um, was. He's actually, believe it or not, supposedly the first person to use in ears. And so uh, I think he was probably going deaf, and it was getting close to like quitting time. But they, you know, some couple invented these in ears, and he was able to use those and. It saved his yeah. career, and of course, everybody you know made the change the industry for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says prototype in ears here on this one. Yeah, um, in ear, tons of in ears, tons of road cases, um, regal bricks of tip sticks. drumsticks. Yeah, the br bricks of sticks. There's so much, so much crap. There's so much stuff, but it's, this is I gotta say, Kurt. Again, I think I mean we're not done yet, but I'm so happy to be doing with this with you. It's kind of fun to have like breaking news kind of thing that's happening oh absolutely and like dissect it so let's jump ahead i guess to 2000s yeah um which you're right 80s is definitely the what you think of but still any era of of alex van halen stuff is cool so uh um, i'm trying to think what those are at the top 2000 okay so those are part of the 2004 he got a he, he definitely had a thing for maple drums at one point yeah yeah, very cool. Yeah. You can see those were, you know, a small part of the 2004 kit. That was actually a pretty large kit. But um, and then the the one that's kind of cool, that bass drum there must be from the it's from the 2007 tour. And you can with see the mini fridge that there was the drum with the mini yeah, fridge and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. so that's a that's a probably a a painted John uh, Douglas finish, which is pretty cool. That's unbelievable. That's a beautiful finish. Yeah. Um, and I have seen there looks like there are pictures of um I've seen where the rest of that drum set's probably sitting around in a hard rock somewhere. Yeah. The other thing to note too, which I think is just a Ludwig geeky thing, that's probably like right around the time they switched badges. So that's the large keystone. And then shortly after this kit was made, they started getting into the whole legacy series and all that stuff. And they were using different badges, but but he's yeah. this is still the classic, you know, eighties keystone Ludwig badge. Sure. Yeah. Um, no, those are beautiful. It's That's a very cool kit. kit. I yeah. love the color of it. Van Halen, uh, DR one road case with dressing room used Gibraltar practice kit. This is pretty interesting. $3,000. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, and it's kind of cool to see that he had these practice kits too, because clearly he was, um, A, he probably liked to warm up. And then you see like there were, you know, he had a, a home studio, which I never knew about. And then he had like a, um, you know, looks like he had like a rolling TD, whatever in there, probably for practicing. And, yeah. and uh, so it's cool to see that he was, you know, had places to practice and keep up his chops and stuff, so to speak. Is that, what is this tube? Is that, it says Prince. That's like tennis. Yeah. Stuff. It's like, is that like know, grip or something? It's, or? it's, yeah, it's certainly possible. I mean, it's, hmm. uh, and there it's was another. Like, yeah. 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 It's so cool. it's, this is incredible. I, you know what, what would be insane is to see this similar kind of just dump of equipment with, uh, Neil, Neil Pierce. And it was just stuff. funny because I was just thinking of Neil because yeah. Neil had a, like a small DW practice exactly. kit. Exactly. And so he would warm up on a real drum set. There was a there was another kit though, like I think after the 2007 bass drum, or am I not seeing that correctly? No, you you indeed are. Uh, different kind of truth. This one. Yeah. Yeah. So he yeah. had this, you know, other maple kit again, and he must have. It sounds like he recorded the out the last album they did with Dave Lee Roth with this kit, and then he used pieces of it, like they played a a one-off show. So they played at this place called the Cafe Wa in New York City, and it was actually owned by uh, David Lee Ross' Uncle Manny. So that's why they that played the there. But he used like a f as a four-piece or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, but that Cafe Wa was like the place where like Bob Dylan played in the 60s. And, oh, cool. You know, it's a really famous place, and David Lee Ross' uncle owned it so for years. It's funny. So, yeah. Yeah, so that was the kit. Actually, I think there's pictures of him playing that at the yep, bottom at the that. Cafe Wa. There yeah. it is. Oh, well, that's yeah, around here. 2012, and they had studio pictures. So he liked liked this kit. Interesting. Very though. cool. Very cool. Very cool kit. Um, yeah. And I don't know what the bid on that one is. I'm sure that one's not not cheap either. Uh, 15000 Yeah. So. Oh, this one's incredible. Oh, yeah. Now this one, this you is, know, this is the last kit. This is 60000 so, This yeah. is the big... Uh, it's not chrome. It's like that kind of plated look, correct? Yeah, it's a mirror chrome finish, they call it. Like, you know. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then they have copper hardware on it. And, and of course, okay. they. Uh, I thought it had that kind of diamond plate look, but that's. I that think was I'm the previous kit. That, that was, was the previous so kit. the previous kit to that was the one from 2012. And I yeah. think it's owned by David Frangioni from Modern right. Drummer. David owns that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this one is the one after it at the 2015. And as you'll see, I don't know if it's in the 2000s or not. But believe it or not, there was actually a, a a black kit that was supposed to be the last kit, or it was supposed to be the next kit. There's a black one that was from supposed to be for a 2018 tour that never happened because, of course, Eddie's health turned for this the worse, and, and that one, yeah. So supposedly this kit was designed, and, and it's a weird, I mean, I can't say I'm crazy about the finish, but it's a matte black finish, and around 2015, Eddie was playing a matte black um wolfgang guitar that they would call the stealth guitar so i have a feeling that this finish was sort of created to sort of mimic the stealth guitar in my yeah. opinion but like it's less flashy but i yeah. bet if you see it if you saw it live on stage i bet it's pretty cool oh i'm sure know? i'm sure it's you know but it's still i like the, you know the glitzies and all the craziness but it's cool to see the symbols with the vh logo on them and yeah reverend al big ride and then the other thing that's kind of interesting to note, too, is because the rumor around the 2018 tour was that they were going to call it the Kitchen Sink Tour, and so, um, which meant they were supposed to, like, bring everybody back, which I don't see how the hell that would have happened. Yeah. Dave, Sam, Gary, all of it. Like, it was kind of Wolfgang's idea to get, you know, Mike, Gary, you know, Sam, Dave, all of them back to do this Kitchen Sink Tour where they would just play the entire catalog of Van Halen. And, of course, it never became to be. But the funny thing is, because there's a lot of pettiness that goes on between like David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar and those VH logos are the, the classic winged logos, whereas yeah. in like the Sammy Hagar era has the rings. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering, it, it's interesting to see just the classic logo. Like it's weird, weird would have been weird to see like a mix of rings and a mix of, yeah, you know, that would have it, was, it wasn't meant to be, you know? Yeah. And that would have certainly confirmed that there was in the works for both singers, but you know, those two can't even stand in a room for two minutes together. So I don't know how that would have worked, but no, no, I, I think it's cool though. But, but obviously the previous kit is, um, yeah, 
is, I mean, well, how much is that one? That one's 25,000. That's not, um, I mean, that's a lot, but that's 25 yeah. grand for, I guess it never really got used a lot. No, but, it, yeah, um, it was never used or whatever. Yeah. And then, um, you know, um, but then, they, you know, if you get out of the, the, yeah, I think they just do so many snare drums. So the other thing that's cool to note is you get to see these Rosewood snare drums. Here's the funny thing. So if you click on that first Rosewood snare drum that's um right below the, yeah, that, that one there. Prototype one. Yeah. yeah, prototype one. So this is supposedly the first prototype of the snare that became, you know, his signature one. So the I think the snare after this one, you know, because this one doesn't have the Van Halen badge on it, but I think the prototype number two, which is the next snare in this auction, has the Van Halen logo and stuff on it. This must have been like the first one hmm. that, um, um, the first one that you know looked like there the one go. that there we go that one. So if you look at the opening starting bid on it, twenty five hundred. Uh, that's really a good price because yeah, when they're so hard to find now, when people sell these drums, they're actually like you know asking six grand for them. And so then the, if you look at this one, it's number fifty one fifty because Alex gave, gave this it to one. Ed. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this yeah. is the drum to have, you know, Alex is, you know, the, probably, you know, 51, I mean, it's just crazy. And the other thing that I just thought I'd mention real quick is like, it said, you know, some of the snares, when they were looking for these and they were going through the warehouse, Alex for a half a second was like, oh crap, there's snare drums missing. And he couldn't think. And then he was like, oh yeah, I let Wolfgang borrow some when he did his last album. And so it's surprising to me that, that Wolfgang wouldn't be like, you know, hey, I, I wouldn't mind keeping these like. Like in my opinion, Rosewood number, you know, whatever, 5150 should stay at 5150. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, and it's not, and there's, there's, I'm guessing, I'm making up a number, but there's 200 other snares. So it's like, oh, yeah. There's no but shortage I mean, of snares. I, I think, you know, in my opinion, like a Tom of Rosewood, like, you know, that one we just looked at, some of the other chromes, I mean, there should be about 10 or so snares from these collection that should be at 5150 permanently, in my opinion. Whether they get stuck yeah. in a case up there and they don't get used, or Wolfgang uses them or what, but I just I'm kind of little little sad in the fact that they're just going to go off and disappear into the world and I be, agree. Be I God agree. knows where. I, mean, well, I really think that you know everybody talks about fifty one fifty and Edward's baby and all that and the sounds coming out of there, but Alex was half of that sound too, and so like yeah. the drum you're looking at. You know, this is I mean, the last one ever used. Twenty five thousand yeah, dollars. That that drum should be at fifty one fifty. I mean, yeah. But, yep. Well, maybe they'll um they'll hear you talking here and they'll cancel the whole auction and they'll put everything oh, back God, at fifty one fifty. I yeah. There's way too much stuff for that. And no, no, no. But I think you're right. And I'm just snares, saying, there's just a small yeah. handful of stuff. I agree. It's it's a it's he does not. I, it was just, uh, it's, we don't know. We'll never know, but clearly it's like, uh, it seems not very sentimental about that kind of stuff or saving no. it or putting it back. Um, and there are lots of people, which is very true that there are lots of people that say, you know, the plane comes from the person and not the drum, but which is true because, you know, you listen to other people playing David Frangioni's kit and they don't sound anything like Alex. Yeah, exactly. But it's it's interesting. Like this one, it's a psychedelic red from the early 2000s when they reissued it. And I never in a million years would have thought Alice would want anything to do with psychedelic red. Since all but, of his kits are all usually in like a maple finish or a... But he probably got it for free and was just like, oh, you want probably. this? I mean, if, like, I would be surprised if he paid for it. Oh, no, um, yeah. He's, you know, Ludwig wouldn't make him pay for anything. He's a... It says you know. used by Alex Van Halen at the 5150 studio. I mean, that right. doesn't mean he played it more than one time. It's 600 bucks. It's not bad. No, no. But uh, um, I, I, are you still in the 2000s era? Because I think. Um, yeah, I am. Yeah, um, I am. I'm just wondering at the bottom. There was, there was one item in particular. The, um, and it might be not in this era. I think it might be uh, under personal stuff. I think it's under his per because there's lots of heads, things like that. All right. Yeah, there's heads, there's gongs. There, there's, there's gongs. Symbols. I want to say there's a really big gong in here somewhere too, but there's but, sticks, there's oval logo logo signature, double butt signature drumsticks. So you can get your double butt drumsticks here if you've been looking. Tons of pedals. Yeah. Uh but the gong flyer. Yeah. 
the gong that's missing is the giant, giant one that says something like Al, Reverend Al's Traveling Emporium on the back of it. <laughs> so who knows where that is. But but so if you go now, like out of the, you know, because I know we're sort of burning yeah, through yeah, the yeah, stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. Here's another gong. Um, let, me, let me go back now. Yep. Yeah. Go to s- personal so at the, items. Yeah. There's something that says something about personal items. And so there's drums in there. Like he has a Radio King kit. Yeah, like yeah. I had no idea Alex was even a collector. Like he's got 40s a 40s Radio King a kit. A 40s Radio King kit. But the other thing that really blows my mind is if you're going down, he actually has a Gretsch, um, like a 70s era Gretsch and like that ruby red pearl. Like uh, you can see it, like you'll see it above the stool. Yep. Yep. That's a that's a cool snare drum. Like I am not surprised he has that. It's awesome. It's five hundred you know, bucks. I mean, that's probably an early seventies. I, I know it's a starting bid. Every all these prices are starting bids, but it's kind of like, um, that's a good price if you saw that. Just yeah, I mean, like wild. that's actually a rare Gretsch finish too. You know, like yeah. even the fact that Alex Van Halen owned it, and of course, you know, my thought too because I've owned plenty of Gretsch drums over the years, and Gretsch drums have their own certain sound and. I want to know what it sounded like when Alex put a stick to it. That's yeah. what I want to hear. Like, yeah, what did, did it sound, sound like on that? Yeah, yeah, like I really would love to know that. But you know, there's other stuff. And then of course, then you're getting down to the the Dutch but Bible and you know the this Dutch stuff. Bible. Yeah, there's like I mean, these are household items from when the Van so, Halens were kids. I mean, it's the, insane. The last thing to note too, like, and I don't, I think you've seen it. I don't know where it is. There's a piano in here. That was at Eugenia, oh, like after, that. after, yeah. um, you know, after, um, their father died, there, Eugenia, the mother had, um, you know, she had a house, the piano, I think was there, but I think, and I didn't read the description closely enough, the piano, I'm wondering if it's the piano that was taken from Holland, like the one they talk about all the time where they said they had a piano and like 50 bucks to their name when they got to America. And yeah. so that might be it. It says 1980s Whirlitz. Oh, okay. Then that's definitely not it. So I guess not, but still pretty cool. I I know. So one of the things that's kind of interesting to note too is like, of course, all this stuff happened like right after we did our interview, but the, yeah. the author of the book Tone Chaser, Stephen Rosen, actually put out a six-part interview series with Alex from, uh, it was like August of 1985. So it was right when Sammy joined the band and they hadn't even finished the album yet. And it's a pretty revealing interview. Like there's a lot of stuff in there that Alex talks about. I mean, I learned a ton of stuff from that. The only, the only thing that I found what I wish would have happened more is of course, Stephen was interviewing Alex for a potential book that he was going to write on Eddie. But of course, Eddie never really warmed up to the idea of a book because he was like, I thought you wrote those about people after their careers were over. And this was like 1986. And and of course, you know, Stephen tried to convince him that, no, no, everybody would love to read this book, which they would have. But Eddie just, just didn't have really warmed up to the idea. So of course, Steven was interviewing all kinds of people and he interviewed Alex. And so it's basically a six part interview. And so he keeps on asking Alex, like, well, what was Edward's thoughts on this or that? And I was kind of like, ask him what he was playing. Like, what was, you know, cause yeah, he'd yeah. say, Whoa, what, what was Edward's first guitar? And they're like, no, ask him what, what your first, you know, what was your first drum? I was yeah. really hoping to hear that stuff, but yeah, it never yeah. came out. Well, you never know. Something might come out in the future. I mean, things... Um, oh, this is already way more than I ever would have thought. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the last page of just random stuff. Again, we'll wrap up here, but people can like go and look at this. The amount of like VIP passes and yeah. all this stuff that he had. But I did want to note that I just think it's incredible that like... I mean, we're talking like tour backdrops that are... 23 by 54 feet that are the size of like a billboard you can buy for three thousand dollars like you can get I, I who has room for that there's multiple tour backdrops like well, it's insane the other funny thing to know too is this was just literally coincided with this you know before I, I saw before I saw this auction was Michael Anthony was actually getting ready for the tour where he's going out with Sammy Hagar and he's got his own personal warehouse and he said, you know, some goodies might be coming on tour. And he was actually like cluing in that he had the Jack Daniels base and a couple of other bases from the early eighties. And I mean, I think Mike has over like 300 bases or so, you know, like man, and these guys have all kinds of stuff and Mike is kind of a pack rat. And so he's got well, all kinds of stuff. You said it 
in the first episode that they grew up with from their dad, the mentality of, you know, if it's all you can eat for a buck, I want two bucks worth. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, clearly he got his two bucks worth uh, with um, this amount of stuff. So it well, just keeps going and going. I mean, there's an excerpt. Oh, there's yeah, a, an exit sign. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane how much how much stuff is in here. Yeah, well, go to the auction, everyone. Check it out. If if you're watching or listening to this, and if you buy something from this, come back to the comments section and tell us what you got. And yeah. I know everyone's going to be interested if Kurt ends up buying something for, you know, I don't imagine you're buying a $75,000 no, drum no, no, set. No. But, but if you get anything, let us know in the comments or whatever. Um, yeah. Everyone let us know if you buy a... I mean, a set list is um, 50 bucks. It'll go up probably, but I can't see that going for, you know, $1,000. So just uh, if you buy something, let us know. And um, if you're watching this after the fact, after the auction is over, I'm sure you can probably still go back and look at the archive um, for a while. So, And, and, you know, the last thing I can say, too, is it it is definitely kind of sad to see all the stuff up here. But uh, I also get it. No, no Eddie, no Van Halen, you know. So it's, you know, we all get to these point in our lives, how many people look around their own homes and say, you know, time to purge the garage. Just, you know, the lawnmower yeah. that you used for the last 25 years is probably isn't going to fetch much though. No, but I think it's also going to be fun to look at this and see what these go for. You know what yeah. I mean? That's kind of the, the, the money, the money game is always kind of fun to, to see how big of a huge, you know, uh, pull these, these, these get and, and who gets them and we'll see all that stuff. But, um, Kurt, as usual, thank you so much for doing this on short notice. Um, you're a veteran of the show now and someone I can mm. always trust to just kind of, I mean, again, you just hopped on here and we, we, we started talking about this like yesterday or the day before and yeah. then now, now we've done it. So, um, anything you want to plug or promote as we, as we wrap up? Uh, you know, I don't really have much to plug or promote, but I will say like, uh, I don't know what's going to happen to this website after the auction's over. I don't know how long it'll stay up. But I, I would certainly urge anybody if they want to snag any of the pictures, I would I would get them while you can because these some of these pictures are really, really cool and they're really great. And so Yeah. yeah. That's a great great archival um yeah. thing to do. Cause I mean, if uh, if future the next generation of us does some sort of future podcast with, you know, virtual reality or whatever in 25, 30 years they probably won't have access to these pictures because they're gone. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. So um, anyway, all right. Well, thank all you right. to everyone for watching this. This is a super cool one. It's kind of different, but I hope everyone's enjoyed it. And uh, we will see you uh, on the next episode, which will be in two weeks from this. And hopefully we'll get back to the normal weekly schedule soon. But I'm just, this has turned uh, too much of a long story right now, but the attic has turned into an absolute nightmare, uh, but it'll be done. It's, some point and then we'll get back into the regular schedule so um anyway kurt thank you very much and until next time thank you